So what are your plans for the future? Like, obviously you're going to do the Mark's thing. Do you see a third uh, sequel? Do you see... Yeah, f I'm going to open up a restaurant or something. <laughs> no, I, I, you know, there's a 10 year gap in between the movies. I wrote a lot of scripts. Um, I have a lot of faith in them. I haven't brought them out yet. Uh, I'm going to let people real close to me read them. And uh, I believe I have four other pieces of material, uh, hopefully knocked down one at a time from here on out. And uh, there's even possibly, you know, the idea of, of in a couple of years, maybe doing a part three on Boondock. There's certainly some ideas percolating for that. And, um, so, are there any other projects that you guys have coming up that you're excited about? Yeah, I'm doing a Robert Redford's film, uh, Conspirator, right now, about the assassination of Abe Lincoln. And then uh, a couple of things. TV thing called Devlin Made Me Do It, and a movie called Sunshine Superman. Um, just backtracking a little bit, just the fact that you know, there is that 10 year gap, and obviously, um, before having not done a film, um, how different was it approaching the sequel now that you have Boondock Saints under your belt? You know, you you have some. You, you're not a first-time director. Yeah, you know, in ten years, you, you pick up a few things, but it, it's essentially the same. You know, I, I took to this craft of of writing and directing like a fish to water for whatever reason. I don't know how. I don't know why. It just kind of made sense to me. So there wasn't like there's not some huge beautiful story about how like, the, the light suddenly, you know, shone down upon me and the clouds parted and suddenly, you know, I go do the sequel and I have all this knowledge I didn't have before. <laughs> it, it, it was pretty much the same thing, like riding a bicycle, you know. I think that there's a lot of people that, that can do this out there and there's a lot of people that can't and, uh, you know, it just you, you roll with the punches, man. I'm going to ask a lot of questions to you guys. For you, um, is your band still together? No, nah, man. Creative differences. <laughs> now nah, we, uh, the, the, that, 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 that business is too tough for me um, it, to, it, to, to serve two masters. My musical involvement these days is uh, hopefully just focusing on putting music in the film. In Boondock 2, we tried to make this soundtrack uh, stamp it as a moment in time. All unsigned new acts, or recently signed new acts, that I found in bars uh, around Los Angeles. My own brother, who happens to be a brilliant songwriter, uh, we recorded a song from him that I've been wanting to do for years called Plastic Jesus. Plays like a mother in the film. Uh, so we, since we didn't have any money and a lot of pressure, we decided to just go take it to the street, and that's what we did. Um, I guess, yeah, go ahead. Um, just from a um, fan perspective, where did the infamous McManus family credit come from? Is that an actual credit that you modified? Is it something you scripted? Oh, interesting story. Uh, my father, my father used to be sort of a, he was an authority on the Bible when I was very young, before our family just ditched religion altogether. And uh, I called him up and I said, look, I got to do this prayer. I had some lines. He said, let me think about it. He came up with some stuff, then found some stuff from the Bible, and we cobbled together the prayer. And it was like, you know, 30 lines long. And then I started finding things that rhymed and stuff. So it was partial Bible, partial me, partial my dad. And I always planned on going back and kind of readdressing it. But it just ended up being exactly what I needed, you know? Uh, don't mean to put any of you on the spot, but do you have it memorized or something? I just know yeah, a I lot do. of the fan base. Has. I do. Yeah. Of yeah, course, man. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. I've had kids come up to me. And I know lines from my favorite movies, man. I mean, yeah. of course, you know. I'm a, I'm a movie fan, you know. Um, what would you guys say to anybody who like is trying to break them out of the acting or the, the film making industry? Like, what would you what would you say to them to like give them words of like encouragement? Uh, words of advice I always give are. <clears throat> A, live well within your means at all times. Um, I got friends that like get a TV pilot, you know, and they get paid 80 grand or something and it's not even picked up yet and they go get a Merc, you know, or something. It's like, things not even picked up yet, you know yeah, what I mean? Driving it's, a Ferrari. Yeah, they're, they're, you know, LA is the capital of people with like nice cars that are renting an apartment. It's just like, <laughs> Wait, you, you're pulling that thing up to an apartment? Really? <laughs> you know, so live well within your means. And also, don't forget that uh, this is an industry that uh, everybody would pay to get into. 
So two years down the line, when you're doing a TV show or something, or you're directing your 18th episode, don't let anybody hear you go, ah, man, I've been doing this for a year now. God, I gotta get out of this and do and go on to big features. It's like, mother a year ago, if somebody said I'll let you direct this episode of, um, I don't know, The Closer, you'd have, but you gotta pay me five grand, you'd be on the phone with your mom. Mom, we gotta find five grand. They're gonna let me direct a TV, you know? So a, a year from now, don't let people hear you going, ah, directed eight of these now. I'm, I gotta move on to like, you know, just, it's, we're all, I hate people that are like, I'm so blessed, I'm so blessed, but realistically, it's like, I haven't worked in 20 years. Like, work is like, my, my definition is like doing something that I pay you to do. I gotta pay you to do this. Because realistically, earmuffs. If they'd come to me and said, we don't have any money to pay you, but we're doing Boondock Custom, <laughs> 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 Money! 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 Triple money to the dome! <laughs> What's your advice to young filmmakers? Um, I think you gotta, as, as horrible as it is, I think you have to move to LA a little bit or to, to New yeah, York, you know? Same one, yeah. Um, maybe well, bring one of these sure, with you. Yeah. <laughs> definitely, definitely. I mean, I mean, you know, if, 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 if you want to be a model, you're not gonna do shopping mall modeling in Texas. You know, you gotta move to New York. If you want to do runway stuff, you gotta be in New York. That's if, how I know if somebody's serious. Yeah, if they're serious, if, if somebody's serious, they say, what should I do to get into acting? I'm in Oregon. Move to LA, first of all. It's like you gotta you gotta you gotta be in the theater to see the show. You know, don't 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 sing to me how like I really wanna break into it, but you're in Fort Lauderdale. Really you wanna break into it? Move the f to LA. You know, if you wanna do theater, move the f to New York. That's the first thing you gotta do. If you're hungry, first you gotta get to the grocery store. Don't ask me a recipe if you don't have any ingredients, you know? Go pick up the Shopping list. My my advice is it can only be to like want to be writers and directors because you know I'm not an actor. My 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 always my first thing is uh, you know you have to make sure that you're legitimately talented. Um, and if your mom and your friends love your, shit, that doesn't mean anything. Um. Well, I guess one final thing. If you um, had to say something to sell all the listeners on the Dark Saints 2, what would it be? If you liked one, two's gonna blow your socks off. I mean, we literally took everything that we did in one and pushed it much farther, you know? And wound it into a completely new story that's totally unpredictable. So far, the fan reactions have been off the charts. I trust that more than anything, more than critics, more than some of the people I work with and stuff like that, more than the opinion of anybody, really. When I see an audience full of fans leaping out of their seats, reacting to every single thing in the film, to every laugh moment, to every horror moment, brutal moment, uh, to every sad moment, that's what I trust more than anything, because it's absolute purity.